We're not alone in building unique things on the driveway. Look at any car forum, look at any track day, and you'll see some project that somebody's built on their driveway or in their garage that's an absolute monster. That's why we're starting Project Driveways. We would like to come to you and look at your car and you can tell us your story. That way we can see exactly what people are building on their driveways. Because we've been to some events and we've spoken to people but there's only so much time in the day you can actually get around everything, speak to everybody and film. And that leaves a lot of things untold. From the mundane to the insane and from the commuter to crazy and sometimes they're just plain interesting. We filmed this episode over a year ago when we found one of the cars from Roadkill had landed in the UK on a ship. So we're going to show you that now. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and check out our website for our merch, our caps and more and if you'd like to, have a look at the Patreon. So for our first episode, we're going to look at something a little bit different, not something you would normally find in the UK and with a bit of fame. If you're anything like us and you're a fan of roadkill, then you might recognise this car as a Ford Country sedan. You might actually recognise it more because this is the 67 Ford Country sedan from episode 33 of Roadkill that they bought in Indy, drove a couple of miles, fixed a few things and then abandoned at the speedway. Eventually, a guy named Richard Sidney spotted this on Craigslist and bought it. Moved it back to Orlando, got it back on the road, and drove it round. Right up until it got hit by a Lexus on his birthday, which is kind of bad luck. They recovered it back to a body shop, got some quotes on fixing it, and the insurance company deemed it a complete, total loss. Which is a bit of a shame for something as nice as this. That's where Paul from Coltec Classics comes in. He contacted Richard, asked him to buy it back off the insurance company, and then he planned on going and fixing it and bringing the car back. He contacted a friend of his, who we've met before when we went to Roadkill at EBC. He had the E-Type with the three rotor in it. He found all of the parts, got them shipped to where the car was, and then started work. The car itself is exactly as the guys bought it way back in episode 33 of Roadkill. It's got a 390 Ford big block, which is exactly the same as the one in my Thunderbird. Only this one runs and drives nicely. So what do you do when you've got a basically working V8? You go drag racing. Now in true Roadkill fashion, as you would expect from a car once owned by the guys, nothing really goes smoothly. On the way to the drag strip, the rear lights stopped working and some of Florida's finest politely told Paul that his lights were no longer working. This would be fine if it wasn't dark at about half five in the morning on the way to the drag strip. Nevertheless, gets there, everything is still running, everything is fine, nothing has blown up, goes to enter. By the way, you can't drag race in shorts. Paul has to go around the pit asking if anybody has a spare pair of long pants to change into in order to take the car down the strip. Paul managed to do two runs and the best time he got was 17... 27.4 at 79 miles an hour, which all things considered for an unprepared brick isn't bad. But anyway, let's hear how it sounds. This has 52,000 miles on, which is almost the same as my Thunderbird, which is about 58, I think. So there we are. Thanks very much to Paul from Coltec Classics for lending us this to look around for a couple of hours and taking us out down the road. If you've got something interesting, something you've built on your drive, something you've cobbled together, we'd really like to film it. We can come to you, we can look around, and you can tell us your story. It would be really good to hear from people.
So if you've got something interesting and you'd like it on camera, we can come to you, film it, and hear your story. Contact us through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or email us at pedalboxshow at gmail.com. You can also have a look at the website. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, shop.pedalbox.show, to look at caps, t-shirt, merch, and more. If you'd like to support any of our builds, patreon.com slash pedalboxshow will allow you to be a supporter of the channel. Thanks very much for watching.